Well, hello, hello, everyone, and welcome to today's show. Today's show of the Healthy Living, Happy Life show that is uh, brought to you by Living Healthy List. And I'm Denise Stiegel, your host for the show today, tomorrow, and next week. And as long as we have these amazing experts to interview and who are here to help us learn and grow so we can live that healthy, happy lifestyle that we have always been dreaming of. So today we're going to discuss something uh, really important um, for kind of everyone, for the people who deal with this situation, but also for the people who um, are around these people. What am I talking about? What is this situation? high sensitivity, about 20% of the population, 15 to 20% of the population is very highly sensitive. So we're gonna find out what that means um, for the person who is sensitive and what that means and how people who aren't highly sensitive, how they can uh, work with and interact with those people. So there is synergy. So again, healthy, happy life and uh, all working together. So, if you find yourself overanalyzing um, uh, the details of conversations, I know we all do that a little bit. No, oh, I wish I had said this, but really overanalyzing questions, you find yourself overwhelmed easily. Um, these are signs of being highly sensitive. So my guest today is Tammy Gowen, and she is someone who not only can ex explain this as an expert, but she is someone who deals with this on a regular basis. So I'm gonna read a little bit about Tammy. When Tammy learned about high sensitivity, she took a deep dive into who she is and how sensitivity guided her life, how she could reframe unhelpful beliefs about it and how it helps her to help others. So of course, why she's here today. So bringing her past experiences as a counselor together with her experience as a coach, using a variety of techniques, including mindfulness, meditation, and EFT tapping, she helps her other highly sensitive people harness their superpower. She helps them minimize overwhelm, learn to honor and take care of themselves, develop positive communication and harmonious relationships, and shift their mindset to honor and embrace their sensitivity as a gift to this world. So welcome, welcome to the Healthy Living Happy Life show, Tammy. I am so excited that you are here. Thank welcome. You so much, and I'm excited to be here. I always love talking about this topic, of course, and chatting with you. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. So tell me a little bit, you know, we, we hear, you know, in your bio, you tell us a little bit about how you have figured this out, but tell us a little bit more about Tammy before you figured this out, that you were a highly sensitive person. What, did, what were your experiences then? And then of course, experiences uh, moving forward once you realized this, there was such a thing as being highly sensitive um, uh, a person. Well, I'm pretty common for most highly, and, and I tend to use the word, the term highly sensing versus highly sensitive, just because in ah. our culture, we have this kind of negative connotation to what sensitive means, especially if it's very sensitive or highly sensitive. So I'll probably shift back and forth between sensitive and sensing. Uh, but for, for all of those who are experiencing that, and it is a personality trait, so those with that, with that trait have spent their life experiencing a lot of, of what I did, which was feeling like out of the loop, out, out, kind of on the sidelines, not understood, not resonating with the same thing that other people were feeling like left out because for me, I wasn't wanting to do certain things that everyone was doing, but I felt like I should because everyone was, what, was wanting to do that. <laughs> so feeling you know, just, just totally out of the loop and not, not heard, not understood. But then also having this experience that things were just big, just a lot and having that like throw me for a loop. And I remember the last similar type movie I, I watched, Amistad, uh, was so heartbreaking for me. And so, I mean, I still like get chills when I think about it. Um, so intense for me because of my processing and how how much meaning is given to everything I, I felt pretty much like I had PTSD for a couple of weeks. Like it was just, you know, in my dreams and my constant thoughts during the day, I couldn't let it go. Those kinds of things uh, can be really 
common and and they were common for me had those experiences and ever I'd look around and everyone else is like oh yeah it was a really good movie <laughs> and, and I just like can't let it go so a lot of those experiences and then also in relationships just feeling like I wasn't understood I hear a lot like a lot of highly sensing people HSPs here it's no big deal let it go it's in the past why are you still dealing with this it, just let it go and mm-hmm. not understanding how to do that and then also feeling like sometimes people in conversation or certain behaviors were being really disrespectful or dishonoring versus you know knowing now that they just come from a different place and so it's a different experience for them but for me I took that very personally which is very common as well so that was that was my life prior to you know understanding this as a trait and understanding why I process things the way I do, why I experience things like I do and have these, these situations that I'm always coming up with or, you know, butting heads with certain people because of, of this trait. And so once I discovered that I, I could take that deep dive and go, Oh, okay. Well, a lot of this makes sense now. Now what do I do with it? But that's, that's really where it, it came from that place of just being, overwhelmed, confused, not being supported, frustrated, disappointed. Often that's, that's kind of my go-to thing is always disappointment in what my expectations are from somebody else or a situation or just not, you know, people not getting it. That kind of thing was always really very frustrating for me. Yeah. I think what you said, um, when you said that it's a personality trait, I think that's really important because a personality trait, you can't really, you can't change you know, people always want you to change, right? Like you're saying, you know, oh, it's not such a big deal. Why are you still harping on this? Blah, blah, blah. Um, you can't change your personality. You know, you can't ch- change who you are to the core, right? So I think it's important for people to understand that both people who are highly sensing, and I do like that term, mm-hmm. um, but also for those people who are listening, who may have that highly sensing person in their life, that they don't understand or they don't know how to, you know, how to interact with properly or appropriately. And a lot of times the responses that we get are from an assumption that it's a choice. We can just opt to not be so sensitive. Just don't be so sensitive, you know, get a thicker skin Uh, or that we're just being super dramatic or unreasonable, you know, that there's some level of something that we either choose or we just need to do something about to make it go away so that we can be like everyone else. Uh, and the reality is, yeah, we are born this way. We're, it's, we're just wired this way. Our brains are actually different. They've done a lot of research to show where those differences are, especially in places that have to do with the processing of emotions uh, and what they call mirror neurons, which, you know, if you look at someone and they smile and you smile or they yawn and you yawn, um, you know, ours are really amped up and much more active or reactive so all of those things are, they just are a fact. It's just the way we are, the way we're wired. We can develop all kinds of tools, which are really important and a mindset and learn how to share with other people. But yeah, the reality is we are highly sensing and that's mm-hmm. the way we are. So a lot of times people will come to me and say, can you just make me not so sensitive or not sensitive at all? Which, I mean, I totally get that, but it's also sad because that means then you miss the, the positive parts of it but it makes sense getting mired in all of that, that overwhelm and frustration. But yeah, it's- I'm glad you just mentioned the positives, that there are positives because everything, you know, what we just talked uh, so far is so negative and I could see it would be draining. Mm -hmm. Um, So let's flip that switch. So what, you know, once someone understands um, highly, uh, that they're highly sensing or people that are highly sensing, you know, what is that, 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 that switch to flip, like to turn it into a positive. Let's focus on that for a minute. The very first step is that recognition that it's not just me and Mm -hmm. there's a reason for this and to see what the scope of it is. So if you look, there's a lot out there. There's one on my website you can use, but if you get an inventory and take that, that's, it says, you know, you, you might be highly sensitive. So, you know, take this inventory. And maybe you don't need that. Maybe you you say, oh, well, of course, that's me. But when you look at something with all of these parameters identified and listed out, and then you see what each of those things are, you have these little clicks in your brain going, oh, no wonder. 
oh, that's a real thing. Oh, when people complain about that, this is why, because this is how I process things. So that first is, is a really good piece mm -hmm. of that is just that recognition that I'm not crazy. I'm not weird. This is the way I'm wired. And there's a reason for all these things. And if I learn more about it, then I can do something with it. And so what, the flip side of all of those challenges that we can experience as high, highly sensing people, all of these benefits are things, they tend to be things that people really enjoy and they, they reinforce us for, but not directly as like, hey, I appreciate this about you because of your sensitivity. It's it's just there. And they wouldn't want that to go away, like being a really uh, go-to person. That, you know, if you, if you need someone to listen to, we tend to be those that, that people will, will seek out because we're good listeners, because we're compassionate. We tend to be really good friends and loyal and those kinds of things. So people will seek that kind of stuff out and see that as a benefit, but not necessarily put that together that that has anything to do with you know, that sensitivity piece. So recognizing all of these things that are working, that we are good at, that people do appreciate and tying those in with our sensitivity so we can see that it's it's both sides. But yes, we tend to be uh, definitely, you know, much more compassionate and empathetic. And this is a whole nother topic, but I usually work with people to to try to go from being so empathetic, which means you're actually like feeling things that other people are mm -hmm. feeling, being so aware of it that that you're taking it in and stepping back and being compassionate without having to do the suffering along with that person. Uh, but but both of those are very closely tied together. We tend to be very intuitive. We don't always listen to our intuition because we have all of these other parameters we're paying attention to, like perfectionism and being concerned about other people's feelings and, and those kinds of things. But they re it really can be you know a, a positive if we're, if we're aware of it. Uh, we tend to be very artistic or creative and that creativity doesn't necessarily mean artistic ability, but those can, you know, go hand in hand. And and really, the the current pop, um, data is showing that it's likely to be actually more like maybe even twenty to thirty percent of the population. Okay. The the initial uh, numbers that were coming out, but when we look at uh, different fields like the arts and theater and you know writers, musicians, all of those folks even a higher percentage because we're really drawn to those and we tend to have those, those skill sets. Uh, we tend to be very diplomatic. And one of, one of our big traits is being able to see things from all sides and consider all different ramif ramifications rather than just picking one and going with it and going, oh, that must be it. We take in all of that, which of course can bog us down. But if we're using that, it's, it's a real skill, especially in work or some kind of an organizational, you know, like a group setting or even even socially, you know, looking yeah. at what all of those parameters are, even to the point of saying, oh, I think this is good for this person and this is good for that person. And in this group, this is something that could help that won't trigger people. And so being aware of all of those things, those factors that can really help uh, can be, a, you know, a huge, huge benefit. We tend to interestingly, I, I as you said that what I just thought of is, you know, I've been in, you know, I've been in the workforce and worked for companies and organizations and, and you know, community things. It would have been great in most of those situations if we had somebody who had that type of insight. So absolutely, I see that benefit. Yeah. Being able to say, mm -hmm. OK, well, these are all of the different possibilities that some people never even thought mm -hmm. of and saying this could work for this, but that, you know, but this factor might not work over here and so yeah all of that kind of stuff is 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 really really beneficial uh, so we we can be really amazing leaders if we have the right environment if we have the right support and and awareness within ourselves and you know from others mm -hmm. uh, and then we also tend to be really aware and in tune to subtleties so we notice things that other people don't pay attention to or don't even they're not even on the radar that is because you know we hear things like that how did you even know that or recognize that and you're thinking well how could you not <laughs> it's just right there <laughs> it seems so obvious because we we see all of that stuff you know going on all the time and so that that's one of the challenges is being able to discern and not paying attention to all of that stuff it just gets you know inundating mm -hmm. but when we're aware of that and we can pay attention to it that can be very very beneficial to notice all of those things. I mean, they, you can call us, you know, like the canary in the coal mine. We're the ones that are going to notice the stuff first. And sometimes that's energetic. You know, we can walk into a room and go, there's something off here. 
and and fine tune and you know figure out what that is versus just waiting for something to happen kind of idea uh, and then we do tend to know you know what it is that people need which is really help helpful in the helping fields like counseling and coaching and things like that or um, you know energy work different things mm-hmm. that allow us to just say oh I'm aware of this that others wouldn't be aware of so yeah can you are- give us a good can you give us an example I mean I have several in my head but I would like to hear it from from you uh, from your perspective example of you know the things that you may may notice or recognize that others don't uh so for some it's it's kind of recognizing what like if, if you have a friend or a colleague or someone who's really struggling, we can pick up on something that, okay, this person actually really just needs a hug and maybe no words, just, you know, knowing someone is there for them. Someone mm-hmm. else might respond really well. And and this might be just, just a hint, hit at the time or, or stepping back and looking at someone over time and recognizing, oh, the way this person, you know, manages things what would be best for them is a really brief, you know, statement of, oh, this is what I'm seeing. This must be challenging, which is reinforcing, but not giving, a, you know, a, oh, you should do this, this, and this, like fill in the blank kind of stuff. Some some people would be good with that saying, you know, maybe they've got so much in their head and they just can't, they can't fine tune anything. And so just saying, oh yeah, I've been in that situation before and this and this and this helped me. Or you know something like that, but just getting this idea of what what each person is likely to mm-hmm. to be needing, or like in a group situation, getting a sense of what can diffuse you know some some underlying tension. Or hey, let's all take a fifteen minute break and go and focus on this or or something. You know, be, picking up on that things are really boiling, and mm-hmm. everyone else is just wanting to get it done, but but maybe we're able to say. Yeah, I think this would work better if we just, you know, do this first, something, something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, in in relationships, that tends to to be really helpful too. When when we know that, oh, I really want to say this, but that's likely to trigger this person because, you know, this is what I've seen in the past or noticed in the past or what I'm feeling from their energy right now. That if I say anything, it's gonna, you know, maybe put them over the edge. And so being able to sit back and be with a person, those kinds of things that are can be very subtle and, and everyone might might not notice. And actually, I was doing a presentation recently in the library with, you know, on high sensitivity, basically, you know, what it is, what it's not, you know, what do you do with it? And there was a couple that was there. And at the very end, he came up to me and he said, oh, I just wanted to, you know, say hey, how great this was. It was very clear. And it was really good to get this perspective because... I am totally the opposite. I am like a bull and I just plow through life, but I'm married to this. <laughs> and this gives me an understanding. Uh, and so he was able to to hear, you know, from a different perspective, not just his wife, how how we can see all these things and pick up all these things and give meaning to all of these things. Whereas he was just like, oh yeah, this is stuff is just not even on my radar. I have no idea. Would never have come up with that or let this bother me because I never even considered that so yeah those those can be again they can bog us down but they can be really really powerful tools right and this is what I love about doing these uh these interviews is you have personal experience you have professional experience and for those of us who you know whether you're in the work environment a home environment when you're when you have somebody who is this sensitive and you know most of the time they always say you know opposites attract um i can you know even looking at you know my relationship with my husband mark we are very different in so many ways and he's kind of the the driver let's get it done where i'm like okay hold on a minute let's think about let's look at and you know i like to kind of do all the dancey things he says he goes kind of like dance around things but i'm always looking you know kind of I, I, I wouldn't say that I'm a highly sensitive person or highly sensing person, though, interestingly, when you mentioned the movie earlier, that is something that um, I experience. If it, if there, there are, there's a movie that I watched years ago that still haunts me. Hmm. Uh, and again, it was 10 years ago. You know, and, you know, I can't quote unquote, let it go because it was 
so it, there was like you said there was so much going on and so emotional um and, and so you talked yeah. about the, the dancing piece or the you know not not making the decision right away and taking all that stuff in that's that's very classic too because we do tend to have a longer processing time because we're taking all of this we're like well there's this and this and this and what about that and we factor all of this stuff in so it usually takes us longer which can be a frustration at work or in relationships like come on make a decision and you're saying yes but i i i have to process all of this so i make the right decision so i don't have to because that can happen too we can get tired of that and just say okay i'm just going to jump out and do something and then have to retract later after you've actually processed and said, oh, you know what, this really doesn't work for me, or this isn't the best scenario for this project at all. I was, you know, feeling rushed and I, I, I needed that time to process. So that, that's a, a, a pretty common part. Right. Of and I could see how someone who doesn't experience this could look at that as like a perfectionism thing, looking for the perfect answer you know, the perfect time, whatever it might be. But from, you know, a highly sensing person's perspective, they're really just, you know, mulling it over, you know, kind of making sure that they have all of the information. So that's an, that's an interesting um, uh, dynamic there, I believe. Yeah. So when it comes to, I, I would think, you know, this, this, this one topic happens to be a topic we talk about all the time in the health and wellness world, boundaries. How does someone who is highly sensing, you know, how do they um, address their boundaries, you know, explain them and um, stand by them? And that's a, a big challenge for us quite often because of the tendency to want to please people, to want people to be happy with us, to not, you know, to want everything because we feel everything so much. We want everything to flow, be harmonious. We don't like conflict and agitation and things. So we want things to go well so that all of that tends to make it more difficult for us to to set those boundaries because we just don't want to upset a, a person or the situation or whatever uh, so being able to honor our needs for one thing as highly sensing people mm -hmm. and the fact that okay if I do what's important for me then I can be the person I want to be for everyone else so that's that's one of the the keys to being able to make that shift but it it does it can take a lot of work and it it does come down to that piece of practice 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 of honoring who we are as a highly sensing person and saying that yeah that's just the way i'm wired it's not because i'm too picky it's not because i'm you know fill in the blank from all the things that we've heard for for so long but it's because i process everything i give a lot of meaning to it and that's that's the way it is and so it's okay for me to honor myself for that and that means taking care of myself loving myself honoring the fact that i have certain needs others might not have others have needs that i don't have so recognizing those differences too and then being able to say okay if if i honor myself by setting these boundaries and maintaining those boundaries then i'm going to be the person that i want to be for everyone else i'm not going to get overwhelmed as much I'm not going to just completely get depleted and not be able to do my job or take care of my family and recognizing the importance of of those boundaries and then being able to just just recognize it and practice and practice and set those set those limits knowing that they're you know that we're honoring ourselves by doing it rather than being selfish because that's the the barrier that we have to get you know over quite most of the time, you know, quite often is that feeling like, oh, if I set that boundary, then I'm being selfish because I should be taking care of everybody else. Should I, you know, there's all these shoulds. I should, I should, I should. When it's really, I need to take care of me. So then I can be that person. And one thing to be aware of too, is always that if people are used to us doing things for them all the time and not standing up and not, you know, just deferring to someone else because it takes too long for you to make a decision in everyone's eyes. And so you just say, oh, well, you know, do whatever you want, but that's really not what you want to do. Maybe the majority of the time, even. So even, even something simple, simple, it seems simple like that, that's social or just about activities where you finally just say, you know what, it's okay for me to say that doesn't resonate with me. That pushes my buttons. That's not comfortable, whatever. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to opt out, but people are used to you just going along with it. There can be some backlash. You know, it might, it might not be intentional, you know, most of the time, probably not. It could be, 
But if we really disrupt things by setting a boundary when we've never done that before, or we're not used to doing that, then we can have a lot of that stepping back and going, oh, this is too much. I don't, you know, it's too intense to deal with this. I'll just give in, just keep giving in. And then, then we're in the same place feeling walked on or not understood or not respected, right. et cetera. So. And I, I think when it comes to boundaries um, in general, uh, as women, we're not as good at that. Cause like you say, you know, we always think we should be taking care of everyone else and everything else. Mm -hmm. um, but I can see how that could be amplified with someone um, uh, with who is highly sensing. I could definitely see that. <clears throat> Excuse me. You made a point um, about, you know, the self-care and doing some of the things for, for you. Let's talk about some more, some of these tips and strategies that you have um, experienced yourself or, um, you know, kind of figured out what works for you. I may work with, you know, you may work with your clients on these different things as well. So I'd love to to hear a few of those tips and strategies. Yeah. And that's, it's really great to address that because the, the first thing that I always work with all of my clients on or anyone that I'm talking with that's highly sensing is calming the nervous system. So if we think of being highly sensing is like being a giant sponge without all the filters. So stuff is just constantly coming in. And because of the way we process everything, if we look at the way we're born or the way we start dealing with something and we look at the level of our nervous system, whatever average might be, we're already amped because we're just, we're just constantly bringing stuff in. So our, our systems are, are busy doing all of this stuff and that can lead to that sensor, that experience of fight or flight because your body's just like, wow, I don't, I don't get a break here. <laughs> just constantly processing, processing and, and managing all of this stuff. And then your body says, Oh, I'm in danger. You know, mm -hmm. I'm got to freeze, whatever it is. Uh, so we really need to take care of that nervous system. We need to calm that part of that is through basic self-care that, I mean, everyone needs all of these things. We just need it that much more because of where our nervous system starts. So things like deep breathing, really, really key. I always start with that and some kind of, I, I like meditation. Not everyone likes that. A lot of that has to do with expectations of what that means to meditate and being good at it or not, which is a misnomer, but uh, something that gets us in it. And this is kind of a trendy word these days, but mindful place. So if we fo focus on mindfulness, but basically what that mm -hmm. means is being in the present versus being in our heads in the past or the future right? If we're in the moment, then our body gets to just go, oh, I guess everything's really okay. There's really nothing scary going on here. I just mm -hmm. am. So being able to be in that place as much as possible on a regular basis. I mean, one of the big things, every time I start working with someone and I'll say, well, so what's your self-care practice like? What do you do to calm yourself? Oh, well, I've done this. I've tried this. I've done this at times, but nothing consistent almost every single time. And we really need that that much more. So all of those things that can really work to calm the nervous system, like the deep breathing, and it's actually really good to, it, while you're doing deep, slow breathing, to have your exhale be slightly longer than your inhale, because that triggers the vagus nerve. That's kind of a, a big thing people are talking about these days too. But but that that tells our rest and digest system, yeah, we are safe. Everything is okay. We don't have to run from the tiger. Life is Life is okay. And then we get to calm the nervous system. We get to lower that that threshold. So any any of those kinds of activities uh, that put you know put us we can do put us in the flow. If we're hiking, if we're dancing, if we're doing something that we just adore, that we have so much passion about that the rest of the world completely goes away while we're in that moment, then that's a really good exercise as well. If we can just get our our brains to stop thinking. Uh, but then also just any kind of, you know, some quiet time. Sometimes people are really not good at being alone or by themselves. So that can be a real challenge. Uh, but having that quiet down time away from everything, away from expectations, from doing and just being able to be so, so important. Uh, but then again, just like with the boundaries, this idea of self-care, it's getting better but in our culture, still self-care is seen quite often as selfish or something that's like, oh, yeah, that's probably good. But do it when you have done everything else and you have magical like time. One o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Which doesn't happen, right? 
It's like, oh yeah, I'll do that if I have 15 minutes left at the end of the day. Well, that always gets filled up and then you don't. And you said, oh, I'll do that tomorrow. Oh, I'll do that tomorrow. So we have to make that a priority, whatever that self-care practice is that we look at. And that can start with as little as five minutes a day of deep breathing or meditation or some kind of a mindful practice, but it has to be consistent. And we have to get to that place where we are, we are stopped, you know, everything, all the craziness that's going on in our, in our heads and around, around us, just being in that quiet place to be and not be focusing on the, the past and the future. I have a thought about that. Um, you know, making it five minutes of your time. And I know that this is something that I do for me. I actually start my day with that five minutes of gratitude and what I call Denise meditation or Denise yoga, um, just for a few minutes, because what I find, um, is it just starts my day on a very positive mm -hmm. note yes. as opposed to, and, and I don't get up with an alarm if I don't, if I, if I don't have to, cause I know that again, I would, you know, it's one of those things just to wake up with a, a shock blaring sound, um, yeah. that can trigger my, you know, that just, that starts your day off and just, um, and a fight, flight and fight, flight or fight. I always say that wrong. Um, yeah. so a thought on that, you know, starting the day with that self-care. Yes. Yeah. And I, I mm -hmm. agree in terms of that, like jolting start. I mean, if you are using a, an alarm, something like a chime is well, the one that I use that the volumes up high enough that I'm a light sleeper. So that'll wake me up. So I'm obviously have to have something that will truly work, but something that's not so, you know, like a marching band or something. I mean, you want something to ease you into waking up. Uh, but then, yeah, instead of just jumping right into checking your emails or checking your voicemail or going to your schedule and starting out your planning, the second that you get up, that's when your body goes, oh, Okay, relaxation's done. Restfulness is done. If you've had that, well, hopefully while you're sleeping, but immediately you completely shift and you're on that track for the rest of the day. But if you can ease into that by recognizing that, oh yeah, I want to mm -hmm. enter my my day gently with some meditation or some mindful practice or yoga or or something mm -hmm. like that. That's yeah, I think very very helpful. And in my case, if I meditate, at, this is seems counterintuitive but if I meditate before bed even though I might fall asleep while I'm doing it because I'm kind of getting tired by the time I'm done then I'm kind of somehow wired and then I can't go to sleep it's mm. an odd thing so and I've talked to some some people too that they they can't manage that very well in the evening if I do something like that in the evening it has to be at least an hour before I'm actually trying to go to bed uh, so then you're trying to you know fit it all in and stuff so if you I think but I think if you can start your day that way to remind yourself that it's not, it's not a race. It's not, you know, something dangerous. It's, it's just my day. And then, then you can go on, you know, from that gentle point, I think is, is a great idea. I think so often we think of our lives as, you know, it's kind of like, you know, it, it's a race, you know, and really life is, you know, give it a name, a marathon, a journey. Um, I like the idea of a journey because the journey, you know, you're, you're actually supposed to be paying attention and enjoying it, like enjoy the phrase, enjoy the journey. And so I think waking up and, and starting a day in that manner, highly sensitive or not, um, really helps you to experience the journey. Yes. Even though we're, we, you know, we're experiencing it differently. You know, we all have different lives, different uh, mindsets, different expectations. I think that's really uh, that to me, that makes a lot of sense to, to kind of start that day and think of it as, you know, more of a journey. Life is a journey and enjoy it. Uh, and and another you know, tip, we all need to learn how. To follow up on that. And this, again, this is for everyone. I mean, most of the, the techniques for high sensitivity are, are the, the things that other people can do too. They're just that much more impactful or important. <laughs> for mm -hmm. us to, to make sure that that they're happening but in terms of scheduling it's it's really good also to have even if it's only five minutes maybe once in the morning once in the afternoon sometime having some break times actually scheduled in for that very thing this is a journey this is my whole day i don't want to get done to at the very end and go wow where did that go i wasn't really even present i was just doing 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 and we've got the, the, not just the emotional piece, but that 
nervous system piece of, of being amped up. So if we can have those designated times, I mean, hopefully you can have more than five minutes and, you know, at least 15 minutes, maybe even half hour in between meetings and projects and all of that to just have a little time to sit back and, and again, maybe you don't have to do actual meditation. You could, or just do some breathing or go walk around the block or go hang out with a tree or, you know, something that gets you away from here for a little while to just regroup because that's really important for high sensitivity. I mean, if we are, if we are just giving all this meaning to things and processing, 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 if we don't have that specific time set aside, we're going to just continue processing and we never get a break. Right. And at some time, at some point that has to manifest into something very un, un, un good. <laughs> um, yeah. as something very negative. Thinking, getting ill, feeling like you just don't even want to go to work anymore, feeling you just can't manage anything at all. And you just want to call under a blanket, you know, it, yeah, it, it, it takes its toll if we don't have some release valve. Sure. Yeah. Tammy, we are running um, close to time. So I want to, um, I can give you the opportunity to tell us, you know, if, if there's one more piece of advice you'd like to give us and then um, tell us how people can connect with you uh, to learn more about you and to work with you. So as, as a parting word, I would say we, uh, we were talking about how these, these parts of the trait can be benefits, how they can be a gift and using them to become our superpower. And that might seem trendy or, or, you know, snarky or something i don't know but um but it 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 really is a fact that we are this way for a reason uh and just as a quick aside they've they've done research on over a hundred species not just human that show this sensitivity trait i mean it's it's been around for eons and it's here for a reason because of all of the benefits that come with it if if we allow for those both you know individually and communally to to you know, foster these these skills. So if we think about that as like, okay, I am highly sensing for a reason, not because I'm weird, not because I'm less than, not because I got the short stick, you know, whatever. It's because it's important, and there are all of these benefits. So you know, having that that re that reframe of like, oh yeah, I'm this way for an important reason, not you know something that says we need to get rid of it. So that's. That's a, a a good thing to be thinking of, you know, all the time going forward. It's like, oh, okay, yeah, it's a superpower and it's it's here for a reason. It's it's really important. I so. love that thought because it it really makes it um makes you realize that it's not something that you need to fix. It's just something you need to grow and and understand. Yes. And and just help other people see what what that is and what that experience is for you so that they can understand they're not gonna get it because they don't come from that place, but they can understand and say, oh, okay, this is different for you. And then you can have that dialogue. Well, how is this different? You know, this is what it is for me. This is what it is for you. But letting go of that judgment of it's something that needs to be fixed because it's 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 here for a reason. It doesn't need to be fixed, but we can develop those tools and, and help others understand. So yeah. Wonderful. And the best way to reach out to me is just to go to Linktree and just my name, Tammy Goen. It's got all of my, you know, there's free resources. I have an app that's out there now. I have a, a weekly TV show. I've got all, you know, all kinds of different resources on that. And then all of my socials and, you know, everything in, in one spot there. So that's really the easiest. Great. Love it. Tammy, thank you so much for opening your minds and, and explaining this really important um, aspect of, of life. You know, there are people who we come in, in contact with every day who are experiencing this and the way we can interact with them um, is now, in my opinion, so much different and so much more open and understanding. So I appreciate that. Absolutely. It's good to be here. And I just love getting, getting that information out there. Cause you're right. I mean, there's no, there's no way to look at someone physically and say, Oh, there's a highly sensing person. I need to ask more or find out more, you know, that, that doesn't happen. So we have to, we have to get to know people or just be aware that, that, people process things this way. And, you know, if you run into someone that's really overwhelmed or having these responses that you can't figure out, maybe that's one of the potential reasons like, oh, I wonder if this person, you know, might be highly sensing, maybe I should check that out. So yeah. wonderful. Thank you so much. 
Thank you to our listeners who are uh, listening to the podcast. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, please uh, put that in, put that information, you know, in the podcast, or if you're looking at this on uh, YouTube, give us a, you know, give us a five star in either place. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is Living Healthy List. Uh, and Living Healthy List is the sponsor of our program here, uh, which is titled Healthy Living, Happy Life. And because that's what we're all searching for. You know, it's not about being rich or being famous. It's all about being healthy and it's about being happy. And when we can have those things, everything else falls into place. So thank you again for being here. Thank you again, Tammy. We'll see you next time, everyone.